EF Core 8 is just around the corner and value objects are finally becoming a first class citizen. In this video I'm going to show you how to use EF Core 8 complex types and I'm going to explain how they are different from own types that we had so far. First of all, what is a value object? I have a book class here which contains some book properties and one of those is the offer. The offer class itself is the value object that I want to use on the book entity. The book is an entity because it has an identifier and the offer is a value object because the value is defined by the values inside. So value objects use structural equality and two offers will be equal if they have the same property values. The concept of a value object is important in domain driven design and up until now you had two ways how you could implement this with EF Core. The first way was using own types and the second way was serializing to and from JSON. Both of these approaches have their drawbacks but I'm going to show you an example using own types. So inside of my application database context I'm going to configure my book entity. I'm going to say model builder entity and I'm going to specify my book entity and then I'm going to say owns one and this allows me to specify the own type for my book class. So I can say that the book owns an offer object and then the offer will be mapped as an own type by EF Core. What this means in practice is that EF Core will treat the offer as part of the book entity and it's going to persist it in the same table in the database in the additional columns that are required to represent an offer. The problem with this approach is that own types are basically entities under the hood. EF Core is going to attach an identifier for each own type and this is how EF Core is able to track changes to the own types. This also prevents you from reusing the same value object instance in multiple own entity types. For example, I can't assign the same offer object on the offer property of two different book instances. This is because it's an own entity and it has an identifier under the hood. Now with EF Core 8 this changes because we finally have access to complex types. So I'm going to show you two ways how you can map a complex type. The first way is using an attribute where you specify the complex type attribute on your entity class and this will tell EF Core to treat this type as a value object and map it together with the owning type. The other way to achieve this is using the Fluent API which is the approach that I'm going to use and how you do that is by saying complex property instead of owns one. So I'm going to say complex property and now this is the same as decorating the offer class with the complex type attribute. Now I'm going to generate a migration and we're going to examine how this will be translated into the SQL database. I'm going to create a migration from the package manager console and I'm going to say add migration and let's call it create database. Now this is what we're going to get from EF Core when we configure our complex property or complex type. We have the books table which is the only table in the database and here are the columns from the book entity. Now you'll also notice that we have the columns here for our offer type which is our complex type and it's treated as a value object and mapped to the same table together with the book. So when I create a book entity and assign it an offer and persist these changes in the database you're going to see that everything will be persisted in one query. So let's see how this is going to work in practice. Here's a simple example of creating a book entity and assigning it a new offer instance which is our value object. In this case I'm working with the clean architecture book and I'm assigning Robert Martin or Uncle Bob as the author of this book. Now let's take a look at the SQL that will be generated by EF Core when we try to add this book to the database context and then call save changes to persist this in the database. Here's the output from NAD Framework Core and you can see the insert statement here adding the book together with the offer to the database in just one query you'll see that the book columns are mapped here and here are the other columns for the offer. So the offer is mapped to the same table together with the book which is what I promised that complex types would do. Let's see another example. So I'm going to create one more book. Let's call it book 2 and this will be the clean code book. Let's give it a different ISBN 
It was published in the year 2008 by the same offer. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the offer and create a variable that will hold the value. So let's say offer and assign it the value. And now I can use the same offer instance in both of the books that I have. So here's the offer for the clean architecture book and let's assign the offer in the clean code book. I also need to add the second book to the database context and now I expect both of the books to be persisted in one query. So let's run the application and here's what we get from Entity Framework Core. So you can see that EF Core opted for using a merge statement here for inserting the books to the database. Essentially, it's going to fail on the unmatched condition and perform the insert statement here. So just the same as we had in the last example, but the important aspect is that we are inserting both of the books to the database at the same time using the same offer instance. This wasn't possible before EF Core 8, and if you try to do this with own types, you will get a runtime exception. This is because own types are entities under the hood and you can't use the same entity instance for multiple objects. With complex types, this isn't a problem because they are treated as value objects. Let me show you a few more interesting examples. So after I have added the books to the database and called save changes, I'm going to take the offer instance and update the last name. So I'm going to say offer last name is C. Martin. This is the middle name of our offer. And then let's try calling save changes again and let's see what's going to happen. So you'll notice we have the same merge statement as we did before. And this will take care of inserting the books to the database together with the offer. But we also have a few more commands below which are updating the books and setting the offer last name. So when you update the value of a property on a complex type, it's going to be updated on both of the related entities. This is because I'm sharing the same offer instance for both of my book entities. And you can see here that we have an update statement for each of the books that we have. And this is really practical when you want to share your value objects between multiple entity instances. Right now, the offer object is defined as a class. However, you can even make it a record and I'm going to use a positional record. So I'm going to define all of the properties in the primary constructor and what's left is the country. So let me specify this. So this is how I want to specify my value object and then I need to update the call to the constructor here. So let me just adjust this. So we're going to assign the first name and then the last name and finally the country of our offer and we have to fix the statement below where we are trying to update the last name. What you can do is assign a different instance to the offer variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say offer is equal to the same offer with the last name of C Martin. However, if I just leave it like this, it won't work. What I have to do is actually assign the value of the offer property on the book entity and only then will the offer's last name be updated. So this is another way how you can mutate your value objects on your entities. And let me show you a few examples of querying the database using complex types. So I'm going to comment out this code here temporarily and let's write a few queries. So first I want to show you that you can do projections using complex type. So you can write something like this. Let's say DB context and then we select the books and then I can select the specific book and project an offer instance from this book. So I can say select me the offer and let's just say first. I need to add a using statement for the link namespace and we should get back the first offer instance that EF Core manages to find in the database. So I'm going to place a breakpoint here and run the application. We hit this breakpoint and I'm going to run the query and you'll see that we get back an offer instance. So this is the first offer that was found in the database. And if I take a look at the console to see the query that was generated, this is what EF Core will send to the database. So it's a select statement only fetching the columns for the offer type. And this is great also in terms of performance with one caveat that complex types are not tracked by the change track. And this makes sense because they are value objects. And in this case, when you project them from the database, 
they aren't connected to any entity. I want to show you one more example of fetching the books from the database using a query on our complex type. So I'm going to say books where and let's write our condition. So where the books offer and then the country of this offer is equal to United States. So I can then say to list and this will fetch all of the books where the offers country is equal to US. So if I place a breakpoint here and I run the application, here's what we're going to get. So we hit this breakpoint, I run the query. You can see that we get back a bunch of books. The reason we have so many is because I was testing all along with the same two books. And if we take a look at the console, you'll see that we have a query here fetching our books. And you can see that the where statement is properly referencing the offer country column and checking that the value is equal to US. One thing that is currently not supported is using collections of complex types. So I can define a list of offers and then map this as a complex property, but I'm sure this will be added sooner or later to EF Core. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about all of the cool features that we are getting with .NET 8. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, stay awesome.